So Nomad Sculpt is full of gestures where you can use either one finger, two finger, three finger, four finger, or all different combinations and either other and other pieces of equipment as well. So I'm going to do a quick video of the ones that I find the most useful, the very, very common ones if you're a beginner, and a few that you might have forgotten about if you've been using Nomad for quite a while. So let's take a look at my favorites. Okay, so let's start with some very, very basic gestures. So um, some of these are just finger movements, some are true gestures, um, and I'll work through the whole set. So the first one that I want to show you is just the one finger. So let's start with that. Now, what the, what's the one finger going to do for you? So the main thing, the one finger is used for is rolling around. So you can do it with your pencil and you can change the settings up here, which will be, I'll go through this quite a lot in this video so if you look up at the top second button in and you've got gestures here there's tons and tons of things that i'm going to tell you in this video that can be configured in here so take it for what i'm showing you in the first one and if you want to change it we look up here for maybe the camera the sculpt the gizmo the material the objects and all different kinds of settings but the one that uh, is pretty much standard is roll it round with the finger and the pen again lock those off if you feel that you just want to use one or the other so that's one finger covered off for now so the second one, simply we've done one, so let's do two. And I don't see many people doing this, so with either hand, you can pan with two fingers. So you just take the two fingers, lay them on the screen in a normal gesture way and move around. So remember, we've got one to rotate, two is basically your pan left and right. So it just moves the camera up and down, or the scene up and down in front of the camera. One and two and that's a very very simple gesture like that. now obviously you can't do that with a pencil so what you might do is move around with the your non-dominant hand and you might rotate with your dominant hand so quite a useful one and one that we probably do without even thinking but there it is okay another two finger gesture is simply tap so if you tap it undoes so we're just doing undoes there so everything that we've done in the scene each time i double tap the two fingers gives us an undo and don't forget there is an undo down here bottom right as as well so you either do it with your fingers or you do it with here and that's forward and backwards okay the next one a tiny one you've just done it two fingers to pan around but don't forget two fingers can also pinch in and out you generally do that with your thumb and your forefinger not your two fingers so most people wouldn't um, roll around with those two they'd roll it with the two like this but you can of course push left and right so the pan push up and down and also the pinch and zoom which you're very familiar with if you've ever had an iPad for more than about an hour so let's move to three fingers now three fingers is one where we move our lighting around and as you can see I'm putting three fingers on the screen and I'm just moving left and right and our entire lighting is rolling around now later on or if you're more experienced you'll know that the lighting is lights and what's called a HDRI map around the whole world and if you want to come up here and you see as I roll around I lock it open with a little pin and you'll see that I'm actually rotating the HDRI and the lights. If you just want to rotate this HDRI, then you just do that here. So as you can see, it's just the reflective image around that's moving, not the lights. So with a combination of your hands or there, you can move either the, the, the actual lights in the scene or the HDRI that's around the whole scene and being used to reflect. So three fingers again, we've just had a look at lighting, but if you roll up with your fingers, you can see the brush size changing here and here. So basically three fingers does two things. It rolls the lights and it roll, and it cre increases and decreases your brush. So if you get used to that, that really, I find that speeds you up because you're not constantly using your other hand to change the brush size there. So that one I do find quite useful. Okay, so we've done one, two, three, and now we're gonna to go to four. So four is very simple, you just tap. So four, tap, and it clears the screen like so. And that's useful for when you want to do like a, a good look at the screen um, and, and see it without anything else on it. Now the gizmo is on there, so you might want to you know, basically move on to an object that's, that's not got that gizmo showing, so you, you, or, or, or even what you can do is a four finger tap, bring it back. So pick something like the base, 
hit the pivot and we'll move the pivot out of the way somewhere so you don't even see it then four finger tap again you can see that you can see everything without the pivot it's just a quick way of doing that so let's do some of those different combos so three fingers move the lighting four fingers show and reveal the interface two, um, two fingers to pan around and obviously one finger to rotate up and down like that now one that i do like is the tap on the pencil so if i'm sculpting so let's go on to the head and we'll just sculpt something um let's sculpt something like just a straightforward line this would be messing up the sculpt obviously so if you double tap on your pencil watch here so double tap the sub comes on and double tap again it's off so on off and the light is changing there so sub basically is the opposite of what we've just done so it indents into the model and that's how you can use it to change different brushes i've got symmetry on there which is why it's causing me a couple of problems but you can see there that will indent into your mesh now pencil double tap isn't just that function you can change it so if you come up to the top uh, second button in again come down to the bottom and you look here you've got pencil double tap now i've got it to add and sub but you could change it to call in the gizmo mask smooth or none at all so you can turn that feature off completely i like add and sub because it just gives me um I, I usually have add and sub or i sometimes put it to masking now the next one is called finger always smooths uh, which i always think is a nice name and i only use this when i'm in a heavy sculpting session so say we've sculpted that area there and i could switch to smooth i could hold smooth here for example and smooth um, i could actually call the smooth brush from this other side or something i could do is if i come up here come right to the top and just below the gesture word you see finger always smooths and what that means is you can sculpt a little bit and then smooth a bit with your finger so it means you've got nothing to think about it just literally smooths as you use your finger and sometimes that can be quite useful i keep it off all the time and then i just call it when i'm doing a heavy sculpting session now the next one is not really a gesture but it's a feature that i like which is the use of a bluetooth mouse so certainly for someone like me who records a lot i really should use this a lot more because you can just add in any bluetooth mouse and i'll put my mouse down at the side and you can see there that gives me a, 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 a basically a cursor so really while i'm doing these videos i i could easily have this turned on and i could show you the individual places where i'm working instead of using the, the the pen and then highlighting it so and i probably will use that in the future more the reason i didn't is i didn't have a bluetooth mouth in, in the office for the last few years i was using mice that you have to plug in um, and obviously if it needs an rf dongle or, or a dongle then it, it it's only useful when it's plugged into a keyboard and i, I never have my ipads plugged into a keyboard but i do find that that quite useful uh, having it in my my other hand if i'm working on a desk like this but the option is there and obviously as you can see for me recording it this would be quite useful for you to be able to see um you know what i'm doing and there you go there's a good few of the gestures that are available to you in nomad sculpt and a few other little features as well um it's well worth taking your time to investigate this gesture panel here and you also might want to look at your bindings panel if you're starting to use a keyboard more because all of your keyboard shortcuts and all of your um, bindings for your or your um, features are available for it from in there but in the gesture panel there you can change things as i said at the start of this video um, you can literally say whether you want the finger the stylus or the mouse to be in use on most of the features inside of nomad so investigate the ones um, that i've shown you here let me know the ones that i haven't covered and any that are your favorite and let me know which ones that you use on a regular basis down in the comments I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content and if you're enjoying it enough to give it a thumbs up then why not subscribe to the channel and anything we upload we'll let you know when it drops